Plaster bandage tips. This is the tutorial you didn't even know you needed. Today we're going to cover the proper use of plaster bandages for making good, strong mother molds or support shells for a life cast. Now to begin, it's important to use the right type of bandage. We don't want to use hobby bandages or some of the craft bandages. We want to make sure we use very fast setting medical grade bandages. And the other thing is you don't want to open your bandages until you're ready to use them. As soon as you break that seal on your bandages, that starts the clock ticking on the bandages absorbing water out of the air. So you want to make sure you don't un unroll your bandages until you're ready to use them in a life cast. Now, I always layer my bandages. They, they come in rolls that uh, this particular roll is a 4 inch wide by 5 yards long. And I always like to layer them at least three layers thick, and in some cases, four layers thick, in this kind of zigzag pattern. And that allows each section to be about three layers thick when I apply that. And since we're applying uh, bandages overlapping each other, that gives us a total thickness of about uh, six layers of bandage material. And for an extra strong shell, we could go with four layers thick, now with our water, these plaster bandages are activated by clean water. And you want good clean water because any impurities in the water can affect the way your plaster bandages cure. So make sure you use clean water that's fresh and not dirty from use with other products or use with other plaster bandages. And the more you dip bandages in the water, the more the water becomes saturated with leftover plaster. And it will eventually start to turn a milky white color. And when it hits that point, it's a good idea to change your water because once that water becomes saturated with leftover plaster, it will stop activating those bandages. Now when you begin dipping your bandages, always hold the bandages at each end, dip it in the water, and work the water in a little bit into the bandage, and then squeeze it back out. And you want to be careful not to dislodge the plaster content. Just gently squeeze out any extra water and you're ready to apply your bandage. Too much wringing action and you lose a lot of the plaster content of the bandage, which results in a weak bandage shell. Now the other thing is the, the way we apply bandages. I always apply my bandages from the top down because if we have too much runoff from those bandages on other bandages while we're building that shell, it results in a weak, soggy shell that doesn't have strength and could wind up warping. Now the other important step is anytime we're building a shell, any edge, we want to fold that bandage material in half and create a nice, hard, clean edge. That way we don't have any frayed little bits of uh, cheesecloth or fabric there uh, that could cause a tear in the mother mold later or could cause the mold to lock with another section of mold if we're making a two-piece shell. But it's important anytime we're building a perimeter on the mold or an edge of the mold that we fold that piece lengthwise and help create that nice hard defined edge. And you'll find that really makes for a nice clean mold and good strong edges because those edges of the plaster bandage mold are what will take a lot of abuse. So it's a good idea to make sure those are nice and thick and have a good clear defined edge like that. Now, once we've built one half of a mold, we're going to quickly cover the uh, seam process. You might have seen this in some of our other videos, but we're going to very quickly uh, discuss the seam process for how we build a multiple piece plaster bandage mold, because this is critical to making good, strong plaster bandage shells. You'll see there's our defined first half of the mold, and we're now ready to build the second half of the mold. Now, let's say this is our original piece, and the blue there is our alginate or our silicone rubber or alginate mold. And now here is our plaster bandage shell on the first half. And then you'll notice there along the horizon line we have that very defined edge. And that's where we want to apply about an inch width of Vaseline along that edge to release that half. And then we can build the second half of the mold to overlap the first by about a half inch onto that release strip where we've applied Vaseline. And that gives us a nice interlocking edge with basically a key that runs the perimeter of the piece. So here we're applying Vaseline or petroleum jelly all along that exposed edge. And it's important that we really work that in. And especially along that exposed edge, the very edge, because you don't want to neglect that 
any area on this because later on, especially in a head cast, where you have a living subject inside your mold, you don't want any chance of that mold becoming locked where you have to tear it apart. Now, once we've applied that, we're ready to build a seam on the for the second half of the mold. And just like the first, we want to fold those bandages lengthwise to create a very nice defined edge that doesn't have any frayed areas on it. And I like to push that right up against that released edge. And that's why it's so important to get that first side released properly, because we want to push that right up against it. Now, if you followed some of our life casting videos, you've noticed sometimes we make one long seam bandage. And that's okay too. Whichever approach works best for you, if you use a short bandages or long bandages for your seam. Um, but either way, you want to make sure that you have that nice defined edge and you push that folded edge right up against that released edge that you created, created before with the Vaseline on the first half. Now, once we've defined that second half, we're ready to make our overlapping side that goes over the seam. And again, that creates that interlocking edge. And this is why it's critical to properly release that edge because you need that to come apart as clean as possible. Now, for time's sake, we're going to skip the finishing of the second half of the mold because basically it's a repeat of what you've already seen. And now we're going to cut to a removal of a life cast shell. This is a uh, plaster banded shell over a Platsil Gel 25 life cast that we did. And you'll notice that interlocking key at work here. And if we've released that edge, we should be able to dislodge it just by putting your fingertips in that shell and very carefully pulling that shell back. And it should release very easily if you've properly released that edge with Vaseline. And if we've got a really nice keyed edge, we should be able to reassemble that uh, shell and lay our silicone into the shell and have a very nice interlocking edge on the front and back half of our plaster banded shell. Now, one of the other important tips is with a, a plaster banded shell over a silicone life cast, I recommend letting it sit for a couple of days before you cast into it. And that allows that bandage to dry out completely and give you a good strong shell before you start having to pry on it to remove a cast. And there you have some great simple tips that if properly applied will greatly increase your strength of your plaster bandage, life cast shells, and mother molds. And of course, the high-grade plaster bandages, the very fast-setting plaster bandages used in this video, are available on our web store at brickintheyard.com.